Spider-Man the Animated Series had one of the greatest toy lines ever. But almost 30 years later, how did these figures stand up to their retro-inspired counterparts? I think the answer on some of these is going to surprise you. Hey y'all, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. Today, we are going to take a peek at some figures from the 1990s and see just how much improvement has been made in the 30 years since. Let's get started. So you knew that we had to start out this mystery box with the main man, and this is not him. Nope, we're not going to start with the web shooter Spider-Man. We're not even going to start with the web racer Spider-Man, who's got this play feature where he can swing along this line. No, we're going to start at the true beginning with Peter Parker. Yeah, man, here we go. I love civilian figures, and I love that they gave us Peter Parker early in the Spider-Man animated line. He's really cool. You know, he's got that animated face, and there's a touch of teal going on underneath that collar, so we've got some 90s action. He's rocking his blue jeans a little bit high there, and of course he's got his brown jacket, and it's actually a really good figure. He came with his uh, camera so that you could have him taking pictures of himself for the Daily Bugle, but as good as this figure is... It doesn't hold a candle to what we just got in the VHS 2-pack. Oh, look at how good this Peter is. I mean, he's got his jacket with his sleeves rolled up. I know he's not wearing his classic striped shirt, but he looks very, very much like what we saw on the animated series. But it all comes down to that head sculpt. Ooh, that animated head sculpt is absolute perfection. And with all the articulation and everything that you get out of this figure, it is an absolute perfect Peter to add to our collections. But what about the guy that Peter came with in his VHS 2-pack, Smythe? Oh yeah, man, these are the kind of deep cuts that I was looking forward to in this animated series line. And they really didn't spare any expense. I know that he's basically a reuse of the body, but these new parts giving him kind of these almost fish-like uh, fins coming off his forearms and legs. Plus, of course, he's got like the sharp bone action coming here off of his shoulders, but nothing Nothing says 90s like a mullet. Oh, yes, yeah. Smythe is all about business up front and party in the back. But how does he compare to his animated series counterpart? Well, let's just say there have been some strides in action figures over the years. Now, I do have to give this Smythe credit for having some luxurious locks with this articulated ponytail. But look at how just extreme this musculature looks like here plus he's got some of the earliest versions of ball hips and ew, boy they do not work very well at all now he has a play feature so that you know you can get his arms and these battle hammer things that are coming off his shoulders to go and of course he's got the scale look and the toes but when you compare new versus old there really is no comparison this smite is clearly the look from the animated series that we're going for. Let's get into some of Spidey's greatest villains, beginning with the Sinister Six, and we're gonna start with Mysterio. Now, this original Mysterio figure actually really captured the character pretty well. He had a little bit more of a modern look to him in the cartoon, and that's exactly what this figure captures. Of course, the classic fishbowl dome is still there, as is his purple cape, and his green coloring. But the play feature, and you can kind of see it behind here, is that he had a squirting feature that would come out through the eyes of the costume. Not bad, clearly Mysterio, and not a bad figure for a kid's toy from the 90s. But with the retro animated line, we got this masterpiece. Now, we had gotten Mysterio previously, but he was much darker colors, just really didn't kind of fit that animated look, whereas this one captures all of that Ditko flair. The glass bowl is so well done with this pearlescent plastic that kind of gives that edge of mystery to Mysterio. Of course, you've got the eyelets here on his cape, but what I really love is this textured body with the quilted look and particularly those Ditko gauntlets that he has on both hands. 
When you add that to these clamp on special effects with their very, very scientific and magical look, oh, this just makes the most perfect Mysterio that we could ever hope for. The next member of the Sinister Six was Craven the Hunter. And I must say, Toy Biz did a fabulous job with this figure. I love the leopard print on his pants. Obviously, his lion cloak here is really great with the mane fully sculpted with like a nice wash going in there. He's got his sandals and his zebra gauntlets here. This is a really, really good figure and I think is a pretty classic representation of Craven the Hunter. Now, for the new retro line, we got that same kind of brightly colored paint scheme. And again, the sculpting on this is just absolutely spectacular, particularly when it comes to this lion head and the mane that comes over the back, even if it doesn't have the same level of paint wash as its predecessor. The only problem that I have with this Craven is that they reused the angry face from the uh, two pack from the Craven's Last Hunt two pack. Now, it's a great Craven head and it definitely looks like him, but I just don't think that it necessarily matches the tone of the animated series. But for now, this is definitely my favorite Craven figure that we've gotten, and I do love how the the bright colors and the different animal skins really pop off of this one. Lizard was actually one of my top 10 Marvel Legends of last year, and it's pretty easy to see why. This guy looks like he stepped right out of a Steve Ditko drawing, particularly the way Ditko drew him in Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1, which was the first appearance of the Sinister Six. The white lab coat, the purple pants, and of course, the bendy wire tail really make this one of the greatest figures of the year. And he did come with two separate head sculpts, but I'm really partial to this Ditko one, which I think actually fits in well with the animated series. And as you're about to see, he was an almost direct knockoff of the original figure. Look at how great this thing is. Again, he's got his tail, he's got his lab coat with this really flimsy white plastic, and he's rocking the black shirt and purple pants design. There's even a little bit of tatters there. The head sculpt even kind of matches as well. But while this lizard was the first one to appear in the uh, Spider-Man animated line, we did get a second version, which I think is maybe one of the best lizard figures we've ever gotten. A little bit later, when Toy Biz started to lean towards more comic-styled figures, we got this lizard. Way, way grungier. The, the lab coat is more tattered. This head sculpt really looks like something out of an Eric Larson or a Todd McFarlane drawing, and it just is so good. So Lizard is somebody who has had a pretty fantastic action figure history, and definitely that continues to the current day. Much like the Lizard, Sandman got a much more comic accurate version in the five inch scale. And I have always thought that this figure was an absolute piece of art. I love how he's got that crazy Ditko hair with the ribs. He's got his big fist on ball jointed shoulders and he's got a giant hammer with really nice tones painted into it. I even love the fact that his converse down here is turning into sand at his feet. This is a fantastic figure. Now, unfortunately, Sandman did not get a figure in the original animated line, but with the retro card backs, they did give us one that would look like exactly what he would have looked like back then. I don't love this figure. He's a little bit plain. I do like that alternate head sculpt with the hole blown out of it, but this one just kind of doesn't really do it for me, and I don't see any way of this replacing my Build-A-Figure Sandman down in my Spidey display. Even though I've had some struggles with the supposedly portable bendy arms and trying to get them to fit into other figures, this animated Doc Ock is just so much fun. The bright colors, the yellow, the green, that head sculpt with the sunglasses and the bowl cut are just so great. And yes, they do pop out, but when you get these arms into some cool poses, the bendy wire really does work outstanding. And so I'm still hoping to try to get them to work in other Ock figures, but as you can see, once you take them out once, they don't really want to pop back in very well, and they're kind of heavy, but it's a, it's a small price to pay for a figure as great as this. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have 
the original Spider-Man animated series, Doc Ock. But luckily, I went down to my local vintage toy store, Toy Federation in Greer, South Carolina, and they had one. So I picked it up and, you know, this thing's been in the package for almost 30 years. Let's set it free. Yeah, here he is. Doc Ock is a free man. Now he's got like a play feature here. I don't know what he does. Oh, oh, look at this. If you pull on it, it actually does like recoil his his tentacles. Oh, that's actually really cool. Like I said, I've never had one of these. And so we can get them kind of up into a little bit larger. Now let's see what happens. Oh yeah, look at that. They crunch right down. Oh, that is so nice. And you can see he's still not quite as aggressive as a bowl cut as the one that we got on the new figure. So that makes the new one much more comic accurate. But still, that play feature, oh man, that is great. And when you compare these two together, you can see they really bring that Doc Ock flavor. Oh, so good. I'm so glad that I opened this up. I had no idea that this play feature was gonna be quite this cool. That's awesome. Now there was one final member of the Sinister Six and that's the Vulture. And in the original animated line, we got this super cool Vulture who I think if you snap his, yes, you can squeeze his legs and his Vulture wings will pop up. Really nicely done with the ball jointed shoulders. You can see we complain about pinned joints. This actually has a steel rivet in it, but we'll see that happen again later in the line. Now this isn't the classic kind of old man Vulture that we're used to from the comics and that we've gotten from Hasbro previously, but but Dan uh, Yoon on Twitter recently said that this retro line may not be over with. So hopefully there's still a chance that we can finish our Sinister Six and pick up a retro vulture. Of course, the Clone Saga played out on Spider-Man the Animated Series, which means we got a black suit Spidey. Now, for those of you who have never seen Rob Liefeld's drawing of Captain America, which I'm showing here, this is kind of the Spidey version of it. He's pretty chesty going across this way, but it's all because it has to suit his play feature, which, and I'm going to be very careful with this 30-year-old play feature, if you pull his webs up, he'll climb up on his spider web that comes out of his chest, because that's how spiders do? Yeah, not really sure about that. Actually, I'm going to make sure that that goes back in there properly. Do not want that thing to break. So it was a good figure. He's got ball jointed shoulders, which was kind of a big deal at the time, and it gives him a little bit more movement. But we definitely needed a much more articulated Spider-Man. And so in the very first VHS set, we got it with this cell shaded Spider-Man. Now, I love a black suit Spider-Man, and I'm becoming more and more happy with the Renew Your Vows body. You can tell it's Renew Your Vows because it's got the, the toe articulation, but this is just way too much on the shell, cell shading. I'm okay with a little bit of blue. I think you could do some blue highlights and it would really work, but this just, this just seems a little bit overdone. Now, thankfully, as we've gone on in the VHS series, the cell, shells, say that three times fast, the cell shading has calmed down quite a bit, which is providing us with a lot better action figures. But this one, we're going to have to just keep using one of our previous Black Suit Spider-Mans over the top of this kind of cartoonish nightmare. The original Hobgoblin figure in the animated line, I think has one of the best sculpts out of any of the figures that we've seen. It has all of the details right, from his satchel to his pointy toes, to this great head sculpt, which I think really brings out the artwork of John Romita Sr. But he also came with a hand that could throw a pumpkin bomb and a feature that's forgotten with a lot of goblins. He's got his finger pointing so that he can do his goblin blast. So this is one that I think has really stood the test of time and is one of the absolute top figures in the original animated line. But not to be outdone, we've gotten two different goblins in the new retro line. The first came on the retro card back. And for me, the eyes on that one were just way too crazy. I've never taken him out of the package. But the second one that came in the Mary Jane pack in the VHS collection really does fill in a nice gap in our collection. Yeah, he's got the animated look. He's got his animated goblin glider. But this head sculpt 
actually hits on an artist that doesn't get enough credit in Spidey's history, and that's Ross Andrew. This, to me, is a very Ross Andrew-looking goblin, and that's important because he was an artist on, on Spider-Man in the 1970s when Goblin kind of made his return and is a crucial part of Spidey's history. Now, this Goblin figure came with a ton of accessories, including this really great pumpkin bomb that has like translucent green flames coming off of it, as well as this stellar Norman Osborn head sculpt. Look at how evil Norman looks on this thing. Oh, so good. So second time was the charm in getting our vintage retro Green Goblin. As much as I love that Green Goblin figure, that's exactly how disappointed I am by Toy Biz's first attempt at the Hobgoblin. He just looks kind of flat. I mean, the, the face is all kind of crunched in. The way that the hood is sculpted doesn't really look right. It just gives him just sort of a big, fat, orange head. And that's disappointing to me because Hobgoblin was the villain in the very first issue of Spider-Man that I ever read. Now, I do love this pumpkin throwing feature that still works really well. He'll snap that thing down. But as far as sculpt goes, this one's just a little bit disappointing. And the problem is it didn't get any better with the retro cardback series because here's the Hobgoblin that we got. And yeah, they kind of amped up the colors and made it look a little bit more animated style. But they just used the exact same head sculpt from their previous Hobgoblin figure. Plus, the cape has kind of the tatters, almost like more of the demonic version, the Demogoblin version of, of this character. And I just was super disappointed with that. So much so that I've never taken this one out of the package. Now, I have tried to rectify it. I did go on Etsy, and I'll have the information below, and pick up this animated Hobgoblin head. Now, this is clearly what we were trying to go for with the Hobgoblin. Unfortunately, the orange turned out a little bit pale, but I do love the sculpt of this, and I think it really does capture the animated style. But for now, we're still waiting on that perfect animated Hobgoblin. Loving what you're seeing? Tell us about it in the comments. We're bringing videos like this to you every week, so what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe already. I've made it pretty clear that I am a big fan in getting more civilians in my Spider-Man line, and that's because I've always really been drawn to the soap opera parts of Peter Parker's history. Those were just as exciting for me as all of the action scenes. And of course, if you're going to do that, you have to have his boss, the bombastic J. Jonah Jameson. And this retro cardback J.J. really captures all of the sass of the guy who was, you know, sensational media before it was cool. He's got his tie all flayed out, his jacket's popping, he's carrying a copy of the Daily Bugle, and of course, he's got his finger pointing where he's shouting orders at somebody like Betty Brandt, another figure that we need in the line. But this was not the first JJ that we got. No, while we didn't get one in the original animated series line, in Toy Biz's later 5-inch lines, we did get this awesome JJ. And this one I think is just as good. He came with a paper as well. It's been lost to time over the last 25 years. And of course, he's pointing and shouting orders as well. But look, his collar is even busted open and his jacket is literally flapping around. I think this is like a candy bar stuck in his back pocket or maybe it's a tape recorder because he's a journalist. But it was good to know that even though this new retro JJ was great, he wasn't the first one that we ever saw. What would Peter be without the ladies in his life? And we did fortunately get a Mary Jane Watson back in the original animated line. She came in a two pack with Peter. It was like a Spider-Man Peter with a Peter Parker head. I think it was like a famous couples kind of two pack. And she's really good. You know, she's got all the standard articulation and she does very much have the look of the animated series. But you can see that the sculpting is pretty dated and this is just really not the greatest action figure of all time. But thankfully, once again, in our VHS set, that was solved with this perfect rendition of everybody's favorite redhead. MJ just absolutely glows here. She's got her go-go boots on. She's rocking those red bangs, just like when she first appeared in the comics. And it's just a really, really nice figure. Face it, Tiger, we hit the jackpot getting this one. But as important as MJ is, she is not the most important woman in Peter's life. That 
goes to Aunt May. And I can't believe I am holding in my hand a May Parker figure. She just is so frail and old and just, you know, she's got her little, her little, you know, sensible shoes on. Oh my gosh, there is actually an Aunt May action figure. And I have to say, back when I got a chance to interview the guys from Hasbro, I called this one. And could there possibly be some civilians that sneak in there? And yeah, you'll you'll definitely have some characters that have not been on the retro card back line before. I, I can confirm that. All right, that's a pretty great tease. Now, you didn't come right out and say that you're going to make Aunt May, but but pretty much I think we can all read into <laughs> it that that's, that that's what's happening, is that we're going to get Aunt May. Whatever like Aunt May does make it into the line, I want to just pre-claim the credit for that. And Dan will Dan will confirm that I have been the one raising the hand. Not necessarily that I'm an Aunt May super fan, but just I feel like she's such an important character for all the Peters and Spider Mans that have come out over the years. And so I'm I'm gonna uh, go ahead and claim that victory. You didn't think we were gonna leave out everybody's favorite symbiotes, did you? Absolutely not. And here is the original Venom figure still on the card now. Don't you wish you could go back in time and buy this figure for $5.97 at Kmart? I certainly know I do. It's a great figure. It has the classic Toy Biz proportions, and he does have his tongue sticking out. But I wanted to take this opportunity to really kind of compare the card art from the original to the new Vintage Retro. So first off, with a six inch figure, it's a little bit bigger than what we got with a five inch figure, just as you would expect. But look at how the artwork is exactly the same. I love that down to very similar use of the spotlight showing up on the, the image. Now, the new Venom is one that does have the tongue out, but he has more of the cell shading both in the form of red and blue, unlike some of our other shell cell shading that we've seen. I kind of like this one better because it really defines exactly what we're going for. But it's all the little touches that make the similarities between these so cool. The original was ages five and up. I guess now that it's six inch, you can go four and up. They both have the warnings about small parts down in the lower uh, left-hand corner and their respective company names in the lower right-hand corner. On the back, very, very similar. Again, you have the exact same art, a little bit larger on the larger card back, but the instructions on how to play with the figure, whether it's a swappable head or the action feature, are right there kind of in that sort of, you know, map-like thing. The one big difference is the cross cell that we get on the back of the original card art. And that's something that I really wish toy companies would get rid of all this legal legal mumbo jumbo and go, go back to giving us the cross sell. That's so fun. There's nothing I loved as a kid more than seeing what other figures were available. But when it comes to everybody's favorite anti-hero symbiote, we've definitely gotten two sweet versions of this figure. But of course, Eddie was not the only symbiote in this line. We also got Cletus Cassidy as Carnage. And this is the original five inch Carnage. You can see it's got such a great black paint wash that really kind of fills in the details of the Carnage costume. His play feature is simply a, uh, a swinging arm mechanism. When you twist the torso, he can swing his ax mechanism. And that's one of the cool things. He came with two attachable symbiote parts. He's got the extra claw hand here and then the extra uh, axe hand here, which really does help with the play value. And it's something that Hasbro brought right back with their newer figure. You can see he came with an alternate extra large claw hand for the left and the axe hand for the right. So they reached right back into the past and replicated exactly what was there. Plus, one of the things that I appreciate about this Carnage is it has less of the black wash, the black lines all over him, which is much more consistent with how he appeared in the cartoon. Now, this is where the new aspect and the new articulation of 30 year newer figures really comes into play. Look at what you can do with this Carnage figure, the great poses that you can get him in, the action sequences, 
it's just really cool. I've made no bones about the fact that Carnage is not necessarily my favorite Spidey villain, but when you can get a figure this good, uh, it might be enough to make me change my mind. Any toy line being sold at retail has got to keep the main character fresh and on the shelves. And Toy Biz managed to do that with their spider armor figure. This is a really neat one. It did appear in the comics, I believe it was issue 50 of Web of Spider-Man, where this actually appeared. And I'm always a fan of figures that not only were part of the animated line, but were also comic accurate figures. Now, it got a huge upgrade on the retro card back. You can see just what a huge difference adding all of that modern sculpting and articulation does. But this is one where I only got one of these, and so unfortunately, he's gotta stay on the card for now. I have no idea why I love the Shocker so much. I guess it's just his general doofiness. The fact that you've got a guy going around wearing a yellow quilt with a brown vest who then has blasters coming out of his arms. But hey, this is a good one. You know, you got him where he can bend. But of course, because of the play mechanism, you've got things that launch out of these. The arms are permanently affixed in this classic Shocker position. But that's a great, great classic Shocker, which makes this figure that much more impressive. Now we had gotten a modern Shocker that had more of his Thunderbolt sort of look, but nothing like this classic Shocker that came on the retro card back. Oh, those gauntlets are so good, the extra hands. And of course, this is one of those places where this effect really, really does work. Now I did go ahead and fill in the web patterns, the little lines on his costume because he came without it and truly without that wash, that was a mistake and he did not look like my vision of the Shocker. So I had to do a little bit of miniature customizing to this one, but I think the results absolutely speak for themselves. Scorpion's a villain who's gone through numerous looks. This is kind of the second version, the more 90s comic accurate look, and it is pretty sweet because that is a bendy wire tail that will absolutely hold its place, but he's kind of pre-posed with the way that his legs are out, and so you're, you're sort of stuck with having him exactly in this position. Now, he did come in the original line as a much more classic animated look with just the simple like two shades of green. He does have the mouth open, which is a little different from the original Ditko design, but I love this scorpion tail. And because one of my first comics was the Amazing Spider-Man Annual, where J. Jonah Jameson and uh, Marla got married with the scorpion coming to attack, you know, I'm, I'm pretty partial to this guy, which is why I was so pleased when the retro came out this good. Look at how awesome it is. Again, Scorpion's a relatively simple design. The body is gonna be pretty straightforward, but if you get the head right, and then you crush it on this Scorpion tail, which they absolutely did. Look at how long this bendy wire tail is, and it does. It's got a good wire in there that will absolutely stay in place to allow you to really go after your Spider-Man. I can't wait to get this guy into some action figure photography where we're using the tail to really kind of wrap Spidey up and replicate some of those great early Ditko issues or that Ron Friends annual. I thought I had the original Toy Biz 90s Rhino figure, but I don't. I just have the second version, which again was the much more comic accurate one, and I'm glad because that first figure was pretty doofy looking, which makes it that much more amazing that this is what has come from it. Now, this is the Build-A-Figure Rhino. This is the one that I put together when I picked up that whole Build-A-Figure set, but it's the same basic figure that was released on the retro card back, and it is huge. Let me see if I can find another five inch figure just to show you how big this Rhino is. I, I'm telling you, it is heavy, and it has all of that incredible sculpted detail and just some beautiful paint applications. You know, over the years, Hasbro started to kind of wean back a little bit on some of the paint apps, but this Rhino Build-A-Figure came correct, and he is about to bust right through your collection. When it comes to improvements in sculpting and toy design, there's perhaps no greater example than the Toy Biz Kingpin. Now, this is definitely a Kingpin figure. You know, he's got that teeny tiny little 
you know, pea head sitting right there up on top to kind of give him that imposing giant look. And of course, he'll do something with his play feature. It may be broke. Oh, oh, I think he'll up. Oh, here we go. Now work. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's try it one more time. Come on, work for me. Yes, boom. So that's pretty great, right? Uh, wrong. Look at this. This is the kingpin in all of his comic stylings with the purple pants and the yellow vest. And he's got his cravat. He's even got his pinky ring rocking it over there on that fist and his diamond encrusted cane. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about 30 years of action figure improvement from a fun toy to an absolute gorgeous collectible with this retro kingpin. I just have to say just how much I love this super poseable Spider-Man. You know, this was a time in the mid-90s where five points of articulation, seven points of articulation, just cut shoulders, cut hips were absolutely the standard and acceptable. Look at what this thing brought us. Yes, we've got ball joints at both the hips and the shoulders, but there's also a ball joint here at the waist, which is vital when you're talking about making a Spider-Man figure. He's got great articulation at the elbow, and there's even added articulation at the wrist so that you can get him in either a fist pose or a perfect thwipping sort of pose. He does have ankle rockers, but when you look at how this thing is aged, you know, these days we all want pinless figures. This guy's still got rivets at each of these major joints, but I tell you what, here it is 30 years later, they're still pretty stiff. They actually still hold up really well. And of course, none of that matters if it doesn't look exactly like what we saw on the screen. And that is most assuredly the case with this superposable Spidey. Until the Spider-Man Classics line came out in 2002, this was the definitive Spider-Man action figure in my collection. And there was no doubt about it. And I have to say that Hasbro did make a pretty valid attempt at replicating it with the superposable cell shaded Spidey. Now, one of the areas where I think they did a really great job was the eyes. These eyes are incredibly reminiscent of the artwork on the cartoon. I think that was really good. The use of the retro Spidey body is terrific because I'm a big fan of that one. You can get him into so many poses. He does still have, well, no, he's actually got pinless arms, but then he doesn't have the, uh, the articulated toes of the Renew Your Vows. So maybe it's a little bit of a combination of Renew Your Vows and Retro Spidey. I like the spider on the back and it has a little bit of the line art you can see in places, kind of here, how the musculature is sort of drawn in to give it that cartoon look. The cell shading is certainly better than what we saw on the black suit Spider-Man. It makes a little bit more sense that the inside of his arms would be shaded, but this is still kind of just horrible right there. So, you know, this is never going to be my definitive Spider-Man, but I do think that it's a pretty accurate comic representation, but it still just doesn't hold a candle either from a nostalgia standpoint a technological advancement standpoint, or really an accuracy standpoint to the original superposable Spidey. If you want to pick up some digital art where I use Marvel Legends to recreate famous comic covers, check out my Etsy shop. New covers and limited editions are added all the time. And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.